Hi guys, it's Bill again. Welcome back to my channel. So, I've been making this for a long time and I've been hesitant because everyone I tell about it's like, um, I, I, I'm not going to try that. So I finally involved some family members, my sister and her husband, Larry and Kathy, to actually try it. I made it. And they were like, hey, it's not what I expected. So what this is, is hands down the best marinade you could ever have. And it throws people because of the ingredients. So I don't want you to get all like freaked out because it's going to be a little scary. So first off, these are beautiful habanero peppers. Scotch bonnets, uh, ghost peppers, whatever you want. It's all, you know, they're all about the same Scoville unit. So, ironically, the way we, we, we treat them and process them, they're not hot. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, this, this is going to be horrible. In fact, what gave me the idea is I saw a recipe where they, they talk about, ooh, be careful, put one pepper in. I'm like, didn't make sense to me. So I decided I was going to make it my own way. Well, you see me all the time cut jalapenos. They're, they're mild, right? Well, when you cut these bad boys, you do want gloves, okay? I am just telling you that you need gloves or you're going to hurt yourself. These things are a little intense. And don't forget, we're going to put them in the food processor and through the whole process, there's still habanero peppers in there. So just keep that in mind. But all I want to do, I'm going to take my little knife here, and I basically want to, just like you were going to cut um, old school, how you were going to cut a, uh, a bell pepper, we're just going to cut the stem out. I want to go down inside a little bit because I want to also get the, uh, you know, some of the membrane and the seed out of here. This would not be the time to cut yourself. I probably picked a dull knife. I always keep one dull knife in the drawer for my wife. Okay, just want to pull this out. Thought I had something to put these in. Go All right, so you really can't see it, but there's not a whole lot of seed. There's not a lot of vein. I did a pretty good job on this. So this is a nice, clean pepper. That's what we want. So I, I, I know that this is kind of boring. And they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Just be careful. You know, just take your time. And if you do make this for people, don't tell them what's in it. Because they will all be like, I, I you're trying to kill me. Honestly, once you try this, you are going to think this is like the best thing in the whole world. So, um, if you've been watching any of my shows, you know I don't, I'm not going to marinate uh, beef tenderloin. But what I am going to marinate for this is skirt steak. So what's skirt steak? That's the best thing you can possibly put in um, fajitas. So it's something you're going to grill really high and, you know, hot and quick. Uh, sear it up really good, and um, and it, it literally is will make the best fajitas. And at the price of meat right now, it's all about the same. You know, for the and, and it's not like you eat ten pounds of it, right? So the other thing that I like to use skirt steak for is. I like to put on beans and rice. And I know I've done that before and I've made beans and rice and I've talked about putting skirt steak on beans and rice. But uh, I thought this time I would actually show you this marinade. Any loose seeds? Shake them out. Almost done. Can't remember, I think I got eight of these. And you are going to be a little startled when you start the uh, food processor because 
you're going to think that Chernobyl has just occurred. But once we get all the ingredients in, we're fine. We'll be just tucky. Okay, so I'm just being careful. Taking my time. We are good to go. So, see that really wasn't bad. I exaggerated because I was going slow because I was talking. Remember that knife? It's got hot stuff on it. So we're going to be a little cautious of that. Move these out of the way for a minute. So, like I said, it's one of those times where you're going to mess up your food processor, get it out, get it dirty. Might as well. And, I'll probably say this every time. Um, I'm going to hazard, if I got this in 1982, it's a few years old, okay? So, it's, it's more than paid for itself in the, in the times I use it. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of unitasker kind of stuff. So let's get started. I got me a red onion, I just quartered it, I got some cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, this would probably be the red time that you'd be like, I don't want this recipe. And there's something about cilantro that a lot of people don't like, so I, I can appreciate that. Put the onion on top to push the cilantro down. So, I want to just see if I can get this chunked up a little bit. Obviously, I can't talk while I'm running this thing. Let's just give a couple pulses and see what happens. Beautiful. Worked just the way I wanted it to. Love it when a plan comes together. I like the smell of cilantro, so I cannot lie. I think this is great. So what I have here is half a cup of soy sauce. This is um, Low sodium, I always use low sodium. I need a little bit of ginger, so I'm just going to give a squirt of ginger in here. Here's the real trick. I need, this is some orange blossom honey, local stuff. I want like a quarter cup of this stuff. Uh, uh. And since we're not eating this, just guess. That's my best guess. That's cool. And the juice of four limes. Sometimes I'll pulse it a couple times just to get it going. Hold on to your hats. Safety glasses and gloves on. That's a slurry. That looks so good. So remember, I have eight habanero peppers, like the gloves, wood red onion, one red onion that I quartered, big handful of cilantro, juice of four lemon, I got my soy sauce, I got my ground ginger, and I got my uh, honey in here. All right, well, one of the worst things I hate to try to clean out of a food processor is olive oil. So we're gonna add that at the end because we need some olive oil in with the meat. Always unplug. 
They have so many safety catches them, you can't start this thing, but I just extra care. These blades are sharp. They had a semi replacement after all these years because they had a recall on them. And I laughed. I was like, man, that's kind of cool because I'm sure my blade's been used so much, I probably could use the replacement. Best deal ever. All right. So, to finish this up, let's get it in my measuring cup. Like I said, we're not eating this, doesn't matter how much or little it gets mixed up. You just want it incorporated well. And this really makes a lot, so I probably could get away with, um, probably could get away with using less, but it's just like, it's, it's the ratio of stuff that I know. And, uh, And it's marinade, you don't drink it, so it's okay. Alright. So now what we have to do, and when I grill meat, I usually put uh, black pepper on it. Well, because this is marinated, which is, this is like the only thing I marinate in the meat department, um, I'm going to put some black pepper in there. So now I have my skirt steak, which I've cut up into little pieces, and I bought this skirt steak a while ago um, because it was on sale. I put olive oil in it when I freeze it, so we actually have olive oil in here, and as you can see, I just do little sections. So what I need to do is get this in here. situation. I mean, I'm going to put just a little more olive oil in here. Because totally you probably want half a cup of olive oil, so I put an extra quarter in here. It's still a little frozen in some spots. It's flat enough that it's breaking apart. Which is what my goal was. And now, big reveal, don't splash this in your eyes. Ooh. It smells really good actually. I'm so used to it because I've, I've made it before many times that it doesn't bother me thinking about the habanero because right now I'm thinking it does smell pretty toasty. So now we're just going to kind of do a quick little massage make sure every piece of meat is well covered. So if I'm going to cook this tonight we're going to put it right in the refrigerator right but just found out it's going to be rainy at dinner time so I'm actually going to put this back in the freezer which is absolutely fine and the sucker, you're going to get out uh, um, the morning of, throw it in the fridge. And uh, remember, when you are putting this on the grill, use your tongs or just dump it on the grill because those habanero peppers are still in there. So, this is how we handle habanero peppers. And trust me, you will thank me because if you ever get the oil of an the nero pepper in your skin, you will realize you can't wash your hands enough to get rid of them. All right, so another quick little video I wanted to show you. Um, I hope you're daring enough to try it. Trust me, it is not too hot, but I really, really appreciate if you subscribe, comment, and click the notification bell because, you know, um,
this is something that, this is kind of a call out, like, I want to see who dares actually make this and try it. I, I think, I think nobody will. And it's really sad because uh, it took me a while to kind of get over this whole thing. And ever since I've done it, I've been making this, I've been making this 25 years. I mean, uh, it's not, it's not going to kill you. It's not even going to be hot because everything's going to cook off in the grill. All right. So I got to get this back in the in the freezer. I want you to try it. I want you to have fun. Here's something else you can just really freak your friends out with, and have a great great fajitas, like excellent fajitas or beans and rice, whatever you want. Um, shout out to my my good friends at Wassie's Meat Market for getting me these great skirt steaks. I'm not monetized. I'm not prejudiced. I'm not promoting them because I'm getting financially rewarded for it. I'm just promoting them because they're good people. All right, have fun, and we'll see you next time.